Incompetence Pod. Welcome to the Perpetual Incompetence Podcast, a journey in competitive self improvement. Join us as the three of us endeavor to improve our lives by competing in a series of low stakes challenges. In each episode, we will come up with a challenge and then define the rules or metrics for victory. We'll have two weeks to do our best, and at the end, one of us will be crowned victor. Hi, I'm Melodious Warbler, Mike Picasso Collins, the Satisfinder, a.k.a. Lil Seeky Boy. Hello, I'm the Dashing Brogue, Dan Collins, the Wee Treater. And I'm Travis Gazellicus Brabin, the Planet Pusher, Postal Pile Driver, and bearer of the Incompetent Cup of Iridescent Splendor. We each have one idea for a challenge for us to attempt in the next two weeks. After we've all presented, we'll decide whose idea is the best. Who wants to go first? You go. I don't. Wanna, I, go. Don't, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to go first. Okay, I'll go. I got one. I have right. one. All right. Uh, this was suggested by Superfan Luna. Um, Hi, Luna. Hey, Luna. You're number one. <laughs> <laughs> we um, need to uh, improve. I'm not sure how to present this one. The idea is we eat foods that are unfamiliar to us to explore expand our palate okay. and expand our minds and maybe learn about um the world around us um so my challenge is to eat the most exotic foods we can find or prepare them or go to a restaurant from the eat, eating eat foods that we wouldn't normally eat to expand our palate. That's my challenge. This one's right up my... our our culinary horizons. Yes, yeah. this one's right I... up my alley. I, yeah, uh, I like that. I like I like weird stuff. I like getting weird with food. Yeah, really. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, I suppose if it was like going out of our way to like make a habit of eating weird food. Um, I, I personally, I have like a, a mental condition, perhaps, we'll go with, where if I'm at a restaurant, I have to search through the menu and find the weirdest thing on the menu, and that's what I am required to order. That is a that is a compulsion that I cannot stop in my mind. Well, then this is good for you. It's easy to sort of fall into, I certainly do this sometimes. Like, I, eat, I like eating weird and exotic foods, but also I eat, like, pasta every day. <laughs> like you know or like pizza uh or on tuesday's tacos you know i basically yeah. eat the same thing over and over but you know it's good to good to get out there and see what else there, there's so many things to eat you can eat almost anything that's true. that's true i like the idea of going to like the grocery store and just buying all the things that i don't know what they are and just trying <laughs> to eat those for the next two weeks that yeah. appeals yeah. to me I like that too. Like I don't know what's this small hairy object. I don't know, but it's lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, do you remember uh, we had a coworker not too long ago who brought, who had originally I think he grew up in Dubai, and he yeah. brought in cookies that had a seasoning in them that I can't remember the, which one it was. Cumin. 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 Cumin cookies, and they tasted sort of like like taco seasoning. Taco it was taco seasoning, but they were cookies, and they were delicious. They were they were, they were, they were very they were good. St- strangely good taco cookies. Yeah. So if you imagine like the texture of like a blondie cookie, but the taste of like tacos is what that seemed like to me, and it was yeah. a, just a delightful and interesting experience. Yeah, That's I sort of what I'm I'm aiming for in this. Is. I don't even... you know. I can't even imagine that. I, I, it was hard for me until he brought it in. I was like, "This, these flavors don't make sense," but I'm digging it. That was kind yeah. of my, you know. This actually brings up an interesting point of, you know, it might be worth going to some of the the weirder, not major, big brand grocery stores in town, like the, uh, you know, they. I know they're like in town. There's like a halal market. That has some stuff like I would never buy because I don't know what it is. Yeah, but like going in there and just like, hey, what's good? Laid on me. Or like, um, there's. I mean, I'm I'm in a big city, but there's like uh, Asian food markets and that type of mm-hmm. thing where they yeah. have they have some <clears throat> stuff that's pretty out there for us, you know. Um, yeah. Or like even like uh, brands of food that are like soft drinks from other countries or 
completely different than ours, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's always like the, I think it's Yaritos, the like Mexican pop or yeah. soda or whatever. Yeah. I think this is a really good challenge. Uh, Luna, I'm not going to give you a credit, Dan. It was her idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's Mike. You and I need to present also, though. Uh, that's a strong entry, Dan. Yeah, that's a good one. I I am a little uh, just talking about that one a little further here. I'm I don't know how we would measure that one. It was just who who went the weirdest, the longest. That, that's what I, I was thinking. Like who who got the weirdest? Who went? Who has the most exotic food? Maybe weird isn't the the politically correct way to say it, but like the the most exotic food, or like either the most exotic food or like this so like the you can have the most things that are outside the normal or you can have the single weirdest thing yeah yeah that, that's what i meant yeah okay the most or both if you could so do quantity it. or quality if, yeah. if weirdness is the thing that you're gauging on yeah yeah right. i go with that uh Okay, I'll go, I'll go next. Um, so I'm bringing back one that I had brought up before, uh, and I remember I messed up the delivery, so I'm going to try and do it correctly this time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically, I what I think we should do is uh, keep a gratitude journal, and so what it, what it is basically is. Um, you you at the end of each day or the beginning of each day or all day long, however you want to do it, uh, you just write down things that you are thankful for. And the idea behind this is to kind of center yourself and, you know, it's, it's sort of a makes you focus on the positive kind of thing. So like, you know, when you're, you're stressed out and you're, you know, getting, getting lost in the sauce, you can kind of take a step back and be like, you know, I'm really thankful that my family is so awesome because of these reasons and that kind of thing. So we do that for two weeks. Um, I don't, I'm not sure how we would do a metric there, but I think it, there's uh, enough value there that we could maybe figure out something. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever one of us is the most grateful. Yeah, who can, who does it the best? <laughs> okay. Yeah, there are sometimes like some of these challenges are going to be like not easy to measure, but the the value probably outweighs the simplicity that yeah. makes it worthwhile. So there's definitely value there. I think it. Yeah, we're definitely at some point going to do gratitude journaling or like there's a thing called bullet journaling which I don't know what it is but I hear people talk about it a lot so maybe someday we'll do that. Sounds great. Yeah. All right, I will go into mine. I think that we put a lot of unnecessary and useless information into our brains. And I think that we should take some time and effort to put something worthwhile into our brains and keep it there forever. I think we should memorize and then recite the most powerful passage in media to us. Okay. So I, I phrase that very specifically that you, like, you could do uh, an excerpt from a book or a poem or a song, something, but something that you would memorize and be able to recite on the back half of this episode. Yeah. And we pick our own. Yes. So it'd be based on who picks the best one and recites it the best. Yeah, it could be on points for delivery if you had a a, a degree of gravitas while delivering your your thing, or the length of the thing that you memorize and recite, or it could just be in like the the power, the emotional uh, strength mm. of the thing that you choose. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, part of this was that I wanted to do something sort of more mental because we just had a variety and challenges and i've been having like a weird sort of like nostalgia for the the poetry challenge we did last year around this time <laughs> so I, i've been trying to think about like you know things that we can do that exercise the mental acuity and capacity okay, okay. i like that all yeah. right all right. <laughs> <Good. laughs> I mean, I was just trying to think if I had anything else to say about it. I guess I don't. I mean, it's it seems like a good idea. <laughs> 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 All right, let's uh, let's hash it out. So we can eat weird food. We can memorize something powerful, or we can. What was yours, Mike? Keep a gratitude journal. Gratitude journal. 
I started off strong. I thought I was going to be able to get there, but there was a real gap in my brain. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like mine. I like Dan's too. That sounds like fun. I also like Dan's. Um, I think. Let's just do Dan's. Should we just do Dan's? My wife would definitely yeah. be on board with this one. My yeah, kids, so that, that's my something kids would not. Like you guys, you guys have like people who are able to cook food really well. Mm-hmm. I live with you. I don't, but maybe the the balancing factor is that I live in a big city that has many interesting and unique and exotic restaurants and uh, grocery stores. Yeah, yeah. You you can probably DoorDash from three times as many types of food as we can. Oh, that's Probably. a valid point. That might actually be a reason not to do this because Dan could just get every every meal of every day, have some new like meal from a different, you know, ethnicity that's yeah. gonna be wonderful and delicious, you know. <laughs> and then we'll, I got like I only have like six restaurants in the city that I live in. <laughs> so I, I think Dan might have uh so you know, sort of a benefit there, but I don't think that that makes this challenge not worth doing. I think that it would still be really fun and could be really, you know, life improving and it could lead to some positive, memorable experiences for all of us. Well, and also when you, you know, I always talk about learning about other cultures and other people's perspectives, but when you eat another culture's food, you, whether you like it or not, you learn a lot about them, you know? I think, I think that's true. I think sharing like a culture's food is one of the best ways to kind of experience that culture, you know, because it's such an integral part of the, you know, the experience, you know? Yeah. Maybe bonus points for authenticity. Yeah, and yeah. maybe you, you just don't just eat the food, but I know that there are cultures where they do like uh, kind of the communal bowls sort of thing, where you get like your piece of bread and you just like dipping it into the different bowls. And if you try to partake of the food in the same fashion as the culture that it comes from, yeah, yeah, I I think this actually could be very fun. Are we doing that one? Are we doing the? Uh, you got my uh, vote. I suppose if we're if we're gonna do it, should we do the uh, if you can't pick your own, pick somebody else's? Sure. Yeah. Okay. What was yours again, Travis? Uh, memorize and recite the most powerful passage of media. Okay. Yeah. Out of yours to use guys. <laughs> <laughs> use. Hey, use guys. <laughs> I yeah, I'd go with Dan's. I think that's. Uh, I like that one. Same. I like Dan's. Okay. okay. Well, then I don't I like need Luna's. Them. Again, not you don't get credit, Dan. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, good. Let's talk metric. So are, are the is it going to be just like who who goes the weirdest with it? Who goes the most uh, exotic, different, or who can like sustainably eat things they've never had the most? I don't know if sustainably is necessarily a factor in this one. Well, I I should say sustained, like. You you ate weird food for many days oh. all day, all day you know. I guess another question because I've I've eaten a lot of weird foods in my lifetime. Like, would this have to be? I was thinking like new weird food, like something that you. I would say if it's something you've never had before, that would be better than something that you already know you like and have had. Yeah. But if there's something in particular, that, like maybe there's something you struggle with as a food. Oh. You know. Or, okay. I was thinking maybe the most interesting and most number of new things eaten or tried. Yeah, that could be good. Yeah. I think I think just those two things we should focus on. Okay. Like try to do the most, but then also while you're doing the most, try to find the most exotic and interesting. Yeah. Okay. And maybe maybe different. From right. what a Minnesotan would normally eat. <laughs> that's, that's not real hard to do. So, yeah. so hot, hot dishes <laughs> off the table. Yeah. Hot dishes off the table. Uh, okay. Yeah. I like All right. this. Yep. Sounds good. All right. Uh, honorific. Uh, the the food. The, the glutton. The cosmopolitan <laughs> the caterer. For, the glutton for punishment. Uh What's the kid's name from Willy Wonka? Charlie. No, the <laughs> other the the one that eats the that falls in uh, the river and gets gloop. sucked up. Augustus Something. Gloop. Augustus Gloop. Yeah. 
I, something cosmopolitan is in my brain. Why cosmo? That's like city thing. It it's trying a number of like, different cultures intermingling. Is that what that means? It, is that what that means? Cosmopolitan. <laughs> <laughs> Googling this quick. Oh, I don't care about the magazine. Give me the definition. <laughs> I thought it. Uh, okay. Cosmopolitan, having a worldwide scope or outlook, not limited or narrow. Oh. Oh, I had. What if what if it was just the cosmopolitan? Boom. Definition. Uh, maybe. Maybe just the cosmopolitan. Can, uh, it feels like cosmopolitan is is just begging to be satisfied like a, or yeah, like a portmanteaued. Yeah. The cosmo food litten. The gourmand, just, the connoisseur. Gourmand is good. Gourmand is nice. This, yeah, there, this is a deep vein of options here. Gourmand. Bon vivant. I believe bon vivant means like good life. Is that right? I like the word gourmand. The exotic gourmand. The cosmo, cosmo, gorm, gorm, gormopolitan. The, the gourmandopolitan. That's pretty good. Foodie. Gourmandopolitan. How about something about your taste buds exploring the world? Like uh, your the, 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 t- the sailor buds. The... <laughs> <laughs> the 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 taste bud surfer yeah the marco the... marco polo of flavor town jeez <laughs> rolls right no. off the tongue <laughs> <laughs> what about the the cosmopolitan pig or something <laughs> Cosmopolitan pig. Magellan. Uh, Magellan was a, a famous explorer. Sure was. Uh, the Gormando. Mondo. Or Gormongus. <laughs> Gormong- <laughs> I don't know. That something about that is upsetting to me. <laughs> Gormongus. <laughs> I like how we go from a challenge of like running a whole bunch to eating as much as we can. <laughs> it's a natural progression. <laughs> flavor saver. Fla- flavor finder. It's simple. Flavor finder. That's I mean that was that's actually pretty dangerous. How about how, how about the the mysterious mask masticator? I'm not sold on mysterious. The mysticator. Why is it why is there what's the mist? No, oh, or it'd be like the demysticator. Well, I was yeah, okay. So mist. I was going with. I was mushing up mystery. But and I'm saying like we're, we're taking away the mystery by exploring it. We're revealing the flavor. We're, uh, we're the the de the demystifying masticator. What was the one that Travis just said that was good? Flavor finder. Flavor finder. Flavor finder. The uh, the palate pioneer. Pion ooh pioneer yeah pioneer. The flavor near. The flavor near. The food near. The pie. Dash oh near. near. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> the gaping maw. Uh. I don't think we should put gaping in any of the... I support Dan on that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, the the savory scout. How about the consuming maw? The Con- consumist. The consumer. Consumapolitan. Consumapolitan is quite good. That's not bad. I kind of like that. Consumapolitan. It doesn't... It's not... Very tidily, though. Yeah, I feel like cosmopolitan. This is like a whole new word for me. I always thought cosmopolitan <laughs> was about like pretty women in the city. <laughs> That's why or cosmopolitan di- or... ice cream is three different flavors. Or uh... oh man, that makes so much sense. <laughs> <laughs> Blowing your mind. You are all right. Well, it's like let's... uh palate pioneer or something to that effect. Pioneer is jazz. Palateer. Or how about the, we could do something? Palateer is okay. 
the palatier like international or like universal uh t- taste the international gourmand the 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 touring taste bud oh, that's not bad the touring touring is kind of nice the touring the worldwide tourist the taste bud tourist taste bud tourist that's cute can we get like cosmic with it the taste bud uh astronaut taste bud traveler oh the traveling taste bud is that what i said before uh no you said what did you say touring I said touring taste bud yeah yeah i kind of like traveling taste how about bud. something about like voyage like voyaging Ooh, voyage the uh, appetite voyager the voyage <laughs> yeah i got nothing <laughs> Voyage is such a good name that we have, like, we just, there's nothing. It's, like, such a, a void. Is there is there a f- word that has to do with food that starts with a V? Uh, the snack voyager, the feed voyager, F and V are kind of, they're similar. The fluv voyager, flavor, Flip. try to tie flavor and voyage. Fl- 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 voyager. <laughs> the fl- it's fl- French. Flavoyager. Fl- 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 voyager. Fl- nope. The, it's bad. Fl- fl- voyager. Eat, eat the foodoid. Fl- I don't think that this is the right direction. The king of cuisine. Uh, nope. The cuisine. Uh, cu- what's it like a traveling word? with Or like a... Travel. Tour. Trek. That starts with a C. Charting. The charting, the cruising con, uh, cuisine, the uh, queen cuisinist. The cuisine cruiser. The cuisine voyager. Uh, Vanilla. That's one that starts with a V. The, the cuisine cartographer. The wandering taste bud. The wandering budist. I think that that's probably interpreted as buddhist yeah i i would like the word wandering because I, I think that's more apropos to what we're trying to do here wander because you're wandering because there's not a lot of that wandering kind of implies some in incompetence in your voyaging skills you know yeah i'm just wandering just wandering my way into a wonderful food the 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 food wanderer so I I I stumbled on a, a a a fresh vein of good words that I think are more uh, relevant to what we're trying to figure out. So I, I wander, uh, meander, roam, drift, saunter. Can we Ooh. use some of these? Okay. Yes. Deep fried drifter. Ooh. <laughs> Deep fried discoverer. I like deep fried. I'm stuck on deep fried now. Rambling rotisserie. The global gourmand. I mean, that's pretty accurate for what we're going for here. Accurate isn't necessarily better. <laughs> the Oh, the Viddle Voyager. <laughs> Fiddles is a funny word. <laughs> <laughs> the Viddle Voyager. I like that. That's my favorite so far. You guys, I'm not getting a lot of feedback from you guys right now. It Deep doesn't... fried drifter. No, I don't like it. You don't like it? <laughs> I don't like it. I. It doesn't sing to me, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> the savory searcher. That's good. Search That's quite... is good. Well, we kind of we kind of have one sort of like that. The seeky boy, searching. Yeah. Delve. Delve is a good one. Deep fried Delver. I don't, a deep fried doesn't, I don't like the deep fried part of it. Yeah. Is roasted, there another D? That's what I'm not liking about it. Roasted ruckus man. The delish. So there's got to be other D food words. Delicious Delver. That, that, I started saying that and I'm like, nope, that's not it. I still like like flavor finder or. Flavor oh, Finder is not doing it for me, but I I kind of like the the taste bud traveler, the taste yeah, or bud. the travel traveling taste bud or something. 
Something about that puts on like a like a cosmic uh, little guy looking searching the universe for exotic foods. And what's wrong with that? Nothing. That's, I'm, it's just paint. For some reason, that paints a picture in my mind. It does sort of like give me the image of like a tiny little taste bud with like a suitcase and like a scarf around its neck. Oh. That so that's for the traveling taste bud. What if it was a taste bud traveler? Taste bud. I think I like taste bud traveler better than traveling taste bud. Yeah, me too. Taste. Bud. I'm on board with it. I, d- I mean, I, it doesn't excite me in the way that Gazellicus did. Sometimes lightning doesn't strike twice, Mike. That's, yeah, yeah I mean. The, the universe can only align perfectly so many times in our life. <laughs> you're right. You know, you got to keep your hopes in a reasonable place. Yeah. That's, you know, that's just something I've learned in life. Cheesy chaser. No. No. I I don't think we're going to do better than the Taste Bud Traveler. Juicy Jumper. Uh... Gooey Goer. <laughs> the fresh fella. No. Nope. Balsamic think... bubble. I feel like we're just we're just fighting it and we just need to let it happen. I think it's taste bud traveler. I, um, I think we we keep that one and maybe we play in the space a little bit longer. I don't know. Okay. Zesty Ooh. zinger. That's not a word. Zesty zinger. Yeah, zinger. Yeah, okay, what's a zinger, Dan? It's like uh it's like a clap back. He's right. When somebody says something and then you or let like you just say something and it's it's uh uh very witty. Okay. All right. It's a zinger. Um What what things like taste bud? Are there any ooh, other like marinated. words we can pair with something else? Connoisseur. Connoisseur of culture. The palate pirate. Man, I'm I'm legitimately running out of stuff to my brain's shutting down. I kind of want to stick with the one that we can we can do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the traveling taste bud or taste bud traveler. Taste bud traveler is my favorite. Yeah, all right. Let's do it. All right, okay say it. taste bud traveler. All right. Um. So okay. Uh, what do you guys think for a uh, forecast? I mean, I I legitimately seek out weird stuff, but Dan also lived in Indonesia for two years. So I know he's not afraid. I don't think Travis is either. Well, how about, let's say right now, what's the weirdest, most exotic, most out there food you've ever eaten? Uh, balut, probably. What's balut? It's like uh, partially developed, I think it's a duck fetus, and it's like oh, a hard-boiled egg. You ate that? Yeah. It was actually not bad. It's uh, The you? texture is a little weird, but like, oh. yeah. You kind of they got like the sauce that you put on there. It's uh, it's pretty. I tasted it. Tasted good. How the was texture the... was the texture was rough to get through. Yeah, I was like, did you? Okay, I don't. That's really gross. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, I, think... I had fried goat brain, and that was pretty. Uh, that was the most. It was also the most repulsive thing I've ever put in my mouth. You know, I don't know if I've ever actually had brain. Don't. It's not good i mean i've heard from some people that's that it is good dan yeah well i think for me uh just rocky mountain oysters oh. bull <laughs> testicles i've never i you know i don't think i've had testicles either yeah we don't need to we're not eating gross foods so we're eating exotic food so they don't have to be they can be delicious well i mean yeah okay but i guess we get i guess we'll get points if they're great if they're weird yeah, like testicles. So I think I think it's a a uh, uh, open playing field. It's anybody's game at this point. Yeah. So, uh, well, this would be fun. I'm excited about this one actually. All right. So we have our challenge. We have our honorific. We have our metric. Let's do this. Hi, this is Dan, just popping in here in the middle. Uh, Me, Mike, and Travis are all eating some food. Uh, And uh, we're going to tell you about it here in just a minute. Uh, I just want to say thanks for listening. Uh, Make sure you tell a friend about the show if you're enjoying it. It helps us spread the good news. Um, 
I just want to read a short poem here. Uh, it's actually a segment of a poem from one of my favorite poets. How come you're always such a fussy young man? Don't want no Captain Crunch. Don't want no Raisin Bran. Well, don't you know that the other kids are starving in Japan? So eat it. Just eat it. Don't want to argue. Don't want to debate. Don't want to hear about what kind of foods you hate. Woo. You won't get no dessert till you clean off your plate. So eat it. Don't you tell me you're full. Thank you. Let's get back to the show. Welcome back to the Perpetual Incompetence Podcast. As a reminder, we recorded the first part of the podcast two weeks ago, and since then, we've been eating our way around the world. Let's start by talking through our approaches to the challenge. How did you guys take this on? <laughs> when I didn't eat something interesting, I felt a lot of guilt. <laughs> I don't know if you guys felt that, but like every time I, I just made pasta, I was just like, man, I should be eating something weird right now. <laughs> <laughs> I felt that a little bit, but that like that would have been really hard to maintain. Like yeah. you just you just need to eat normal food sometimes. Yeah. Well, okay, normal food, you know, it's normal for us, but um I my approach was I I kind of made uh some plans of what I wanted to eat and I asked around um and then I ended up not eating as much exotic food as I had hoped, <laughs> but I feel like I, I ate some pretty exotic food. Um, and then I ate, I ate one thing that I thought might win me the challenge. And then I sort of stopped eating weird food. <laughs> <laughs> I will say right at the top here for me that I, you know, I, I went to some lengths on my own, but if I win this challenge, almost all of the credit goes to Holly, my wife, who, like, as a hobby, she is always, like, looking for new recipes to try. And, you know, we have, like, tried a number of, like, ethnic or just, uh, you know, foods from different countries or different cultures. We we generally are doing that kind of outside of this challenge anyway. But she she took it on herself to really go above and beyond within the last couple of weeks. So I have benefited from that both within the context of this challenge and that we we've also eaten really well. So <laughs> I would say, Travis, uh, don't worry. I think we attribute all of your wins to Holly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that's just a that's fair in general. <laughs> so we'll uh, see. We'll see if I win. But yeah, uh, we have like numerous cookbooks and stuff like that, and she she really went above and beyond on that one. So we had a good variety, and I think I've got a pretty good chance. I uh, so yeah. So uh, I took a different approach actually. Um, so I I had big plans of like really going outside of my bubble and trying different things. And uh, well, first of all, I was thinking about it, and like like we kind of said in the first half of this, like I I don't have a problem going outside of my my bubble. Uh, it would have been nice to seek out like a new favorite food that we ate all the time. Uh, the unfortunate thing and the excuse that we always use is we just don't. I didn't have time to do it this time, uh, but I wasn't going to use that as an excuse this time. So what I did is I picked a food that I don't like. And force myself to eat it every day <laughs> to, try, okay. to try it, to try and develop a taste for it. That was my approach. Interesting. Right. Yeah. Kind of turning the tables a little bit. Yeah. yeah. What is so like, the food? Well, are, are, are we going down uh, this? Well, we, might well, as well, we might as well go. Yeah. I mean, I mean we're, we, yeah, yeah, I guess we, we can't so, just not talk about the foods we ate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's not a secret. Yeah, it isn't a secret. Well, okay, so uh, my entire life, I have hated mustard. Oh, Can't stand mustard's so good. Yeah, I yeah. know everybody says that, and that's what I was uh, trying to uh, get get into. So I, I guess uh, some things I noticed uh, about going down this adventure uh, is that if there's a you know something with a powerful flavor like mustard, and you eat it with uh, nigh on every meal of the day. It's uh can ruin all your food. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Must, mustard is really good, but it's not really good on everything. Yeah. <laughs> I tried it on, yeah, well, I tried it on like some normal things. Uh, I didn't have any hot dogs, uh, but I actually, uh, I've, I've come to the point where I can eat like corn dogs and hot dogs and brats with mustard and it's fine. Same thing with like burgers. I, the trouble like where it comes in is when people want to put it on like sandwiches or Mm. like on their like, you know, chicken and that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I had a lot of sandwiches with mustard on it. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like I ruined a lot of sandwiches, especially in the first like week. <laughs> <laughs> Did you try like a variety of different mustards? I yeah, we had like the Dijon, the stuff with the chunks in it, and then we had the yellow, and I tried to do both as often mm. as possible. So anyway, that's hard to wrap uh, my head around because like I love I don't I don't I, make a sandwich without mustard, or I, if I have a hot dog or a brat or a corn dog without mustard, it's it doesn't it's not right. Yeah, well that's uh you know. It's it's my cross to bear, Dan. Okay. I just uh, <laughs> I, I I understand that a lot of people are like, you know, very pro mustard, uh, and that's that's the train I was trying to get on. So so, so how out of one out of ten, from one to ten, what would you rate mustard right now? I would say it has creeped up from maybe a three of acceptability. Um, like I said, I have a, like I'm not afraid of things that I don't like or have never tried before. So it it like I can handle it. But as far as like seeking it out, it maybe went from a three to like a five. <laughs> Just like I, I was ready for it, like towards the end, like I had a ham sandwich uh not today. Today I said no moss, no mustard, no moss mustard. <laughs> but no mustard. But, but yeah, yeah, no mustard. But yesterday I had a sandwich and it had mustard on it, and I was like, this is this is fine, I guess. It's <laughs> the ham. <laughs> that's that's where it. I, I wanted to come come into the saying like, you know what? I love it now. It's my new favorite condiment. I want it on everything. Uh, that is just not simply not the case. Sorry, everyone. So I'm kind of curious, like, what, like, did you put it on literally everything? No, I, I had like, so I, I put, I put it on eggs. Um, I put mm. it on. It's mostly sandwiches. I, uh, I had some chicken. I like went to restaurants and I made sure I had it on all my stuff. Uh, like you know, eat obviously like burgers and stuff like that. But like also like I went to uh, pot belly sandwiches and. I put mustard on my BLT, which did not make for a good sandwich. Uh, yeah. That's... I know that um, I think a lot of people who do like weightlifting competitions use a ton of mustard because it's a relatively low calorie but strong flavored thing when compared to like mayo based sauces. Sure. Uh, that's a random, random fact that I know. But yeah, I don't think that I never, I don't know. I've only ever put mustard on things that mustard is supposed to go on. I've never tried it on eggs or anything like that. It's not. Well, I would say it's not good on eggs. I feel like that might uh, ruin your idea of mustard if you put it on oh, weird stuff. Well, I had to try it on a bunch of different stuff to see if I'm missing out on something. Right. So, yeah, that's interesting. This is where we went. I I had to pick something that I could do, you know, within the time frame, you know. So that's that's what I chose to seek out. So I tried right. it. I did it. I lived it, you guys. I Good. lived the pain. I'm glad to hear it. I wish that you had, you know, rounded the corner on mustard, but <laughs> well, if you give it a five, that's that's uh five is is I would say five is if it's on there, it's like yeah, whatever, it's fine, it's fine, okay. It's, but I'm not gonna be like I have to have it on the sandwich, otherwise it's not a sandwich. I'm not there. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I'm there either. That's where I am. I love mustard so much. <laughs> I like I. That's I, I'll have mustard over ketchup in my fridge. All right, that's I think fine, we've talked man. enough about mustard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what? What did you guys do? Uh, so what I did versus what Holly did, and I, I simply ate. Uh, I'll, I'll walk through the list here. Um, I didn't. We didn't eat out exotically all that much. Um, there is one thing, but I'll save that for the end. So, over the last two weeks, um, here are some things that we have enjoyed. Uh, we had some Mediterranean lamb meatballs with a yogurt sauce on flatbread. 
Um, it's amazing. It was, it was amazing. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. Like some of these things were like, uh, we, we have sort of found a new, I'll put air quotes staple in our, our lives. Like, you know, you have meals that you do semi regularly, mm -hmm. like macaroni and cheese or whatever. This may end up being one of them. Cause it was just like lamb. It may not be lamb. Maybe we might do pork or something like that, but just like little seasoned meatballs and then you got the flatbread and like a mixed in yogurt sauce and it's like lettuce and carrots and stuff. It's so good. I think uh, in Europe they call them kebabs. Yeah. Or kebabs. Uh, it's so good. That's that's on my list of things I had. Uh, was a uh, a Turkish kebab. Oh. Yeah. And then there there was a lamb koftas with couscous salad and yogurt sauce. Again, very similar, but uh, this was more heavily spiced. Um, this you could definitely taste the pepper, and this is one of the things that you know you would eat for dinner and you'd be like tasting the rest of the night, <laughs> which <laughs> good or bad, I don't know. Um, in the couscous salad, I don't really like couscous. So this was sort of like tolerating something that I know that I don't like. And it was, it was fine. Uh, then we had alligator bites we found some alligator nuggets and we fried those up and tried them and they were okay. They were just kind of like weird chicken nuggets. Yeah, I've had <laughs> alligator before. It's kind of rubbery. It's like fishy, fishy chicken. Yeah. Yeah. And then with the alligator bites, we had uh, Cajun uh, Raymoulade, uh, which Raymoulade is spelled R-E-M-O-U-L-A-D-E. And Holly even gave me like a pronunciation <laughs> uh, spelling here, <laughs> phonetic spelling. Uh, so we had the Cajun Raymoulade Jambalaya. With the, the alligator bites. And then we had uh, Doro Wat, uh, which is uh, like an Ethiopian chicken stew. And when Holly was cooking it, she, she used half of the spice level. Uh, and it was still like, I don't know, I think it was a, like a literal pound of onions that like <laughs> was put into a pot and cut up. So while she was cutting up the onions, Otto and I were, uh, were doing magic uh, deck building and playing in the kitchen, like the, you know, the kitchen table. And it's like everybody's eyes were burning for like an hour. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she did half seasoning. And even then when it was done, like it was real spicy. Uh, it was good. But like if she had done any more than half seasoning, it would have been nearly inedible for our, our weak Caucasian palate. <laughs> uh, and then she tried the, it's called injera, which is like a sourdough flatbread uh, thing. And she like... <laughs> Um, I mean, really, she, you know, if I win, she, she wins the challenge. She did all the work, but there's like this injera takes like, it has to, um, ferment for a couple of days as like a doughy mixture and then you have to make it. So she like did all this work and then it just didn't pan out at all. Um, <laughs> we think that it was like too much water or something, but like when she went to fry them, they just didn't, didn't come together. So that was sad, but points for trying, hopefully. Uh, and then Dan, you, Dan was kind enough to bring jackfruit. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if people don't know, jackfruit is the fruit that juicy fruit gum is based off of. And, I feel like it's loosely I mean, based off it. <laughs> yeah. I think all the best parts of it ended up in juicy fruit and that's, that's all the redeeming factors there are. But I mean, uh, all, I'll let you all talk three more of about us, it. all three of us ate yeah, that. Yeah. So. I should say, I, I also partook of the jackfruit. It was slimy, but tasty. I could have, I could have saved that for myself, but I was being, I felt generous and I didn't want to eat the whole thing because I, I know I didn't like it that much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you still probably came home with most of what you brought. Yeah. It, I mean, I ate, I ate a good chunk of it. Oh, I mean, if you ate a lot of that, then power to you. That like, it wasn't terrible, but that was just like, it was weird. It had a weird texture <laughs> and the, the sweetness of it was almost like a, like a cloying sweetness. Like I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't choose to eat that again. Nah, if me either. Me. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and then the the last thing that I ate, um, I did a little road trip with a, a friend uh, this last weekend, and we went and we got um, you know some Mediterranean food, some um, kebabs or whatever. And one of the appetizers that they had available was fried chicken gizzards. So I had some of those. Ooh, chicken gizzards are so good, though. Uh, 
love love me some gizzards i i did not enjoy it it wasn't bad it was just it wasn't like seasoned or flavored at all it was just like fried gizzard so it was just like like fried with like a batter and then just like just chewy oh yeah it's just it's just rubber you gotta pickle it yeah pickle it yeah yeah that's a that's a collins collins family staple is pickled gizzards oh yeah so good I, I had never had chicken gizzards until till then, and that was not was not a high mark. I would say maybe we'll I, try them. Travis, we're gonna place. I'm gonna I'm gonna treat you right. We'll, uh... <laughs> All right, I'll try them we'll again. Yeah, we'll flip the script on this one. Okay, I mean it wasn't terrible. It just like like this is I don't know. It's just like I don't know frying a hockey puck and then chewing on it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was edible but it, again it was not something that i would seek out not in that style apparently pickling is the way to go so but that that's what i did that's what i ate and overall like i said i ate pretty well these last few weeks so yeah it sounds like no you had complaints. a great time with this one yeah yeah that sounds all of those sound like stuff i'd be super into including the the hockey puck gizzards <laughs> all right dan what'd you do uh well so i I feel like I could have eaten more weird stuff. I'm surrounded by a lot of worldly uh, restaurants and stuff. Um, I'll just kind of talk about what I did here. Um, I I get well, one thing is is not. I guess it's not weird for me, but I'm gonna mention it because it might be weird for some people. Uh, I there's this place by where I work that I eat lunch at every once in a while, but I got a couscous bowl with tahini sauce and steak. Um, that, you know, at like a Mediterranean kind of place and they, they cut the steak off of a spinny cone type of thing, you know, I don't know. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That sounds amazing. It, oh, it's great. Yeah. I love it. I wish we had one of those nearby. I would be there like every other day. If you come day. to me, I get they're, they're all over <laughs> where I am. <laughs> um, I had that jackfruit. Uh, when I bought the jackfruit, I was actually looking for a durian, um, oh. which is like one of my favorite fruits, but you can't find it anywhere in America. Um, I think it's illegal to import it. Well, it's not because I found one. Um, oh, you did? I All did, right, and I was going to buy it. It just, there's only one. So I, so there's this uh, place, it's called the Hmong Village. There's a, there's a large Hmong community uh, in uh, my neighborhood. Um, and uh, they, that's where I got the jackfruit from. And they have like a bunch of kind of weird fruit. It was, it was perfect for this challenge. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and, uh, they had, they had one single durian and it was $20 per pound. Jeez. And I was like, and I, how much, how much does this durian weigh? It weighed five pounds. <laughs> so they said they would sell me the durian for $90, $90. And I'm like, well, I don't know if I'm going to spend that much money for a single fruit. <laughs> yeah you don't want it that bad yeah it, doesn't durian smell like terrible yeah well i mean it, it smells strong but uh, it smells kind of like gasoline i don't know i love it because <laughs> i like when yeah. i was in, in indonesia we ate so much of it it's so good i don't know I, that is not how you want a fruit to smell yeah <laughs> like gasoline well and like the first time I, I ate it i mean this is i didn't do this for this challenge so this doesn't count but like the first time i ate it i was like gagging a little bit it's just it's like so <laughs> potent and the texture is so weird and the flavor is so like different. Yeah. But then I tried it a second time, as Anthony Bourdain says, you have to try everything twice. And uh, I loved it. I fell in love with it, and we ate. I then I would just eat like three of the entire fruits in one go. It's so good. <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. Anyways, uh, so then I went to this Turkish restaurant, and I got a bait. Bait, I don't know how you pronounce it. Bait tea kebab. It's just this super delicious ground beef or ground lamb uh, thing cut up on like rice. I don't know. Tomato sauce and like that yogurt, you know, that like Greek yogurt sauce. Yeah. I don't know. Tzatziki. Uh, it's so good. It is so good. Um, yeah. Mediterranean food is amazing. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It's really good. Um. I went to this uh, this Scottish place um, nearby, uh, and I <laughs> uh, I got a lot. I, I ate there quite a bit. Uh, um, it's uh, they they have a lot of like beef on uh, with uh, like cheese, and they put pickles on there. Mm. Uh, it's called McDonald's. Mac- McDonald's. Uh, it's really good. <laughs> 
Sure. <laughs> um, I got. <laughs> I see. That what was, you a did was a little joke. I ate a lot of McDonald's <laughs> and I felt guilty about it. Um, you should. You you like I was legitimately excited. I was like, is it actually a, a Scottish restaurant? Like, do they have like haggis and stuff? Because that's that, what so, I thought. Oh, haggis. Haggis. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it's like we should make. I'd, let's make a trek and do that. Yeah, that would be but actually pretty awesome. You you just you've filled me with disappointment. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is a um, another thing I got that the uh, Hmong village. It's just like this big. It, it's like it would be like what an open market would be in Asia, but it's in a building because it's Minnesota and it gets cold here. Mm -hmm. uh, they have like a bunch of little restaurant stall things. Um, I got this thing called a bun bao, which is like, uh, it's like a giant uh, dumpling with like, mm. but it's like made of sweet, sweet dough. And then inside it has pork, like steamed pork. Oh. It's super good. Yeah. Like I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to get that more. Um, it's yeah. like really, it's, and it's like, it's like, like you can fit it in your, that's, you can only hold one in your hand. It's really big. I think I've had those before. Bun bao. It's really good. You can yeah. sometimes get them at like Chinese restaurants, but they're yeah. usually smaller there. But yeah, bao is like, yeah, I'm jealous. Yeah. That's something that Holly and I want to do. Yeah, it's really good. Um, and then, uh, also at the Hmong village, um, there's this thing called lob, I think it's originally from Thailand. I don't know. L-A-A-B. Um, it's made from like thin beef strips. Um, and then it's made with uh, tripe, which is like the stomach lining. Um, yeah. And then they put like uh, cilantro, lettuce, you know, so just some other seasoning. It's pretty, pretty bare. And then they put like a different amount of spice on there. And then they also um, use bile to like the mm. stomach bile to kind of flavor it and cook it sort of yum um <laughs> it was actually pretty good i mean I, I thought it tasted really good um and uh I... it, it comes with like a with pepper like actual full peppers on there and uh i don't know i ate that that was pretty good i also ate a pepper that i thought was not as spicy as it was and i don't really like <laughs> spicy food so if that counts i ate that i haven't felt that kind of heat and a very long time <laughs> and it was about a half hour before I was able to like breathe normally again. <laughs> um, but then uh, the pièce de résistance is so lob um, traditionally is, so I had lob with the cooked beef and everything, but traditionally it comes raw. Mm -hmm. So you get raw beef, raw tripe and raw and bile and seasoning on there. Um, and I ate Ooh. that and it was pretty was that... good. Like really? I got halfway through the whole dish until I like it sort of entered my mind where I uh, was like, I'm eating <laughs> raw beef <laughs> with bile on it. Like it, honestly, it, it tasted pretty good, but I was just like mentally it sort of grew in my brain that I, this is, <laughs> this is a weird thing to be eating. So I, I couldn't finish it, but I did eat, I ate a good amount of it. So Started kind of hedging your bets as far as like, well, if I get food poisoning, well, you know, I want to have food poisoning. Yeah, well, I, I think the bile sort of like kills any bacteria. So oh. um, it, it tasted good. Honestly, like I, I, I kind of want to do it again just now that like, you know, you do it a second time because you kind of get over the fact that you're eating it. I don't know. It's pretty good. So that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. power to you, man. Like the the uncooked stuff, I'm a little wary of. I don't know if I'd have been able to do that. Yeah, I didn't get sick, so that's good. Yeah, uh, that's what I ate. Yeah, I think that our initial thoughts of Dan having way more selection, living in a major city, kind of played out. <laughs> yeah, I kind of we knew that was going to happen. I feel like I could have done more. I wanted to go to an Ethiopian place because Ethiopian food is super delicious, but I. I I don't know. I never made the time for myself to do it. So do we want to talk about challenges or do we want to move into deciding who won? Uh, we can talk about challenge. Well, I guess we've already kind of gone over that. I'll say my challenge is that I don't have authentic uh, Hmong village uh, markets nearby. I, I mean, I maybe could have gone to Rochester and looked possibly, but I don't know. It, it comes down to selection and I mean... Yeah, Holly. well, especially if you can have it, like, order it and have it, like, ready to eat, you know. 
<laughs> it's right. just, just brought to you. Well, that place is literally like four minutes from my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's hard to compete with. Yeah, uh, let's go into picking a winner. So we like I I lost, but uh, between you guys, I I feel like. Well, I mean, you could argue I, your case. I feel like eating something that you know you don't like is. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> I guess no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I wouldn't. Mean... Vo- I wouldn't vote for you, but I think you did a different challenge, sort of. Yeah. I, I did. I feel like I just, you just... you were like you were trying to like challenge yourself. Uh, it, yeah, just like in a different way, I guess. I don't. Know. I would. I would say it's you know it's uh, we we were going for exotic foods. I you know I, there is some stuff I probably could have got, but I just didn't have the time for. So this is what I went with, and I made myself suffer. So I mean, I I didn't go as exotic as you guys did, which you know I I am aware of this. I it was difficult for me to do, so I went with what I knew I could do. I, I did a little Kobayashi Maru thing, change change the rules of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think you did a good thing, just not the same thing. But I I will say I suffered for it. I did not enjoy this this challenge. Uh yeah, I was trying to get to the point where I could enjoy it, but it wasn't happening. So, so there you go. Uh, well, you you, you uh, reaffirmed, you, you you tested, and then you discovered that you've been right all along. When I was joined the Marine Corps, before I moved to Hawaii, uh, like I was stationed in Hawaii, uh, like I was actually a pretty picky eater. Uh, but then when I got to Hawaii, there's even, there's this crazy food all over the place and it's so like weird and exotic. And you know, there's, you know, I'd never had sushi before and they have like the best sushi out there. So like, uh, after that, I, uh, I was down to try, like I taught myself to be open to new flavor experiences. So, uh, I think, you know, as a kid and until that point, there, there's this big mental hurdle that you have to get through. So when uh, we're talking about the mustard thing, it's been this kind of like last one of the last remaining hurdles for me to like enjoy f- a food thing that other people do that I thought was maybe just my own preconceived notions that I've developed over a lifetime of saying you don't like that, but maybe you do. Turns out I just don't like mustard. It's the end of the story. <laughs> I find it funny that you're like raw fish and, you know, dirty ocean insects. Yes, please. I'll take some of that. But <laughs> mustard, this just ground up, you know, mustard seeds. Nope. I don't want that. That's disgusting. <laughs> it's just, it takes over everything else. There's no other flavors when it enters the picture. That's true. You got you to gotta pair yeah. it with other super strong flavors like uh, sauerkraut. Well, you know, I was that it did make me think. Yeah, I, I had that thought, and I, you know, I like sauerkraut. Sauerkraut's delicious, uh, but I would say sauerkraut is less of an intense flavor than mustard is. Uh, but it kind of reminded me when you were talking about how you uh, tried durian and it was like made you gag, even though it actually tasted okay. It's like the the texture and the smell. It's like it reminded me of the first time that I, I tried Limburger cheese because I don't know if you've ever had it, but it legitimately smells like vomit. <laughs> <laughs> and like as you're putting it into your mouth like you know if you inhale you'll get that like vomit smell <laughs> like in your mouth but when you bite it it's delicious the cheese is, is fantastic it's super good so <laughs> yeah, this, you can maybe pair like some mustard and limburger on rye with some sauerkraut that'll probably <laughs> yeah you should try it <laughs> sure <laughs> maybe it's amazing <laughs> Uh, like you a, just die like the you. lyrics to a Weird Al song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm done talking about mustard now. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> All right. Um, so I I think is it are we doing the thing where Mike picks who wins? Uh ooh. Yeah. Well, what do you guys who do you guys think won? Uh I I think I feel like I ate the most exotic food. That's true. But, the the un, the tripe for sure was more exotic than at least my chicken gizzards were fried. I thought chicken gizzards were pretty weird, but you guys are like, "No, nah, that's that's what we ate when we were babies." <laughs> yeah, so, well, yeah. 
I, Apparently that's not that as, as weird as I thought it was. Pickled turkey gizzards are, I don't know. I mean, as, when you say pickled turkey gizzards, it sounds like it, nothing. It sounds like a weird thing, but like when you, like a joke. when you eat it, I mean, when it's, if it's prepared, right. It's so good. Super like good. You, nobody, you can't even deny how good it is. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to take your word for it. Until no, I no you, you'll have to and take no. the taste word for it because we're gonna Mike. Mike's gonna make it for you. Yeah, Mike. We're Mike made some really good turkey gizzards the other year. Yes, I did. All right. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I think uh, I thought I, I had a, a pretty good shot, but I think based on the number, I think Dan wins. And I'll yeah, Dan, I think you have the number of things well, and the the intensity of the tripe and whatever. I think you you well you ate more things. I didn't eat that many different things. I, I well okay. Here's what I would say though. Uh, so Dan, you I think you did try the weirdest stuff, but Travis, uh, you you said you may have found a new staple for your household. Like Dan, are you going to go back to some of these things? Your tripe dish. I will. I will 100 percent buy more bun bao. That was so. Oh good. sure. Yeah, I mean, who, you'd be crazy to not have more bao. Like if we like. Uh, Bao is like it's sort of like a a sloppy Joe, but better, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a sloppy Joe, like a clean Joe, like a well shaven right. Joe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's got his life together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he's gonna four hundred one k. This one's it's called Joe on track. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sloppy Joe's like successful brother. <laughs> established joke <laughs> so yeah i mean saying that you're you're gonna enjoy some bow i mean that's i i don't know I, i'm not really suffering if we eat a bunch of mediterranean food either but i mean bow is amazing it's like yeah you know what i think i will keep eating filet mignon yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, well yeah i mean i don't know okay i don't think staple i don't think any of this is going to be a staple in my life if that has any bearing i don't know i i honestly think that it comes down to you mike what was our challenge? Was it the most exotic or the most expanded palate? Well, the way that I was imagining was stuff that was that you don't normally eat in Minnesota. Okay. Yeah, experiencing cultures different from your own. All right. In this case, I think that Dan takes it just to to the exotic nature of the things he tried, like uh, the stuff that uh, Travis made sounds uh amazing and a little different but it's not as uh mind-boggling as some of the things that dan got down on so i i think i would have to give it to dan i think i i can i can see that i i concede the point and i i kind of agree with you in that if we were going for authenticity like dan could have just eaten the cooked version of the yad or whatever lob but he he the lob and he, but he chose to eat the uncooked and do the authentic style. So I think that that's a strong point in his favor. Um, but I'll, I'll just point Holly at you when we, we hang out at your place this weekend. <laughs> it's fine. Can direct her ire towards you. That's that's fine. You can you can make <laughs> lob. You can have uh, sure. you can have lo- Holly make uh, raw lob. It's super easy. I watched a YouTube video because I was I. I... <laughs> It's so actually I actually was halfway through eating it and then I looked up what it actually was. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when you stopped. That's when I kind of was like, oh, this is this is raw beef and bile. Uh maybe we could do that. I don't know that it's it's anywhere near the top of the list. That's fair. <laughs> I'm sure it is fine. Everything like I think generally around the world, there's a lot of like dishes that people like they prepared what they had available and then eventually they found a way to make it palatable and then eventually they found a way to make it like actually okay pretty good but many times those dishes are not amazing because they have bile in them or whatever <laughs> like, you know you can only be as good as your your ingredients we should uh, we should find a place that serves uh haggis i've always wanted to eat that but i've never i guess i've never had the opportunity this would have been a really good opportunity to eat haggis for the first time you can buy it like cuz i i think all you need to do is uh, bake it once you get it or boil I it. I wouldn't trust myself. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's put a bow on it. Uh, I honestly don't remember what the, the honor of it was. Uh, it was a taste bud traveler. Okay. Taste bud traveler. Fair enough. Mike, do you have any closing thoughts? 
Uh, no, I don't think my thoughts are worth mentioning. Do you want to talk about <laughs> mustard some more? Well, we can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I would say if I was, should we rank it on a one to ten? Yeah. Uh, I would give this. Well, I think that the the actual challenge, I would put this as like a nine or ten. I think yeah. this is a great thing that a lot of people don't do. They kind of stick to their known foods and uh i know like when i finally started branching out and trying new weird foods like it was just a a a garden of delights there's just so much stuff out there and you're never going to be able to try it all yeah i think i think the real takeaway for this challenge is maybe don't do a a concentrated two-week challenge for it but if you can when you go to a restaurant if you look at the menu like flip it over and look at the back and scroll down to the bottom and see what's weird on there and maybe just try that occasionally i think that's the the real value here is just openness to being able to try some of the weird things and maybe you find that it's amazing like it, it, dan did you know what bow was before you tried it this time i i did uh because uh my coworker luna um is uh a Hmong person and she has told me to buy it, to try bow before and uh i this was my excuse to try it <laughs> This is this is Luna, great friend of the show. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but if you didn't know what Bao was and you just happened to try it at random, you would have the best surprise ever. So I think if people just take as a takeaway, oh, I'll, I'll, my rating on this, I, I say, yeah, nine, sure. Oh, did I, I mention? People, so I'm ahead. sorry, I'm sorry, I totally cut you off in the middle of your thing. Please continue. Well, no, I forgot it. So <laughs> it, that. that that you're genius giving... insight is gone forever. Well, I was just gonna say, I just something popped in my mind that I forgot to mention. I tried mustard and oatmeal, like just oatmeal with mustard. No. In it. <laughs> See now you're uh... making me like like mustard less. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was that was all. Sorry. <laughs> that one, uh, for the record, is not worth doing. <laughs> It was actually so bad that I put some ketchup in there to see if I could make it better. <laughs> it did not improve the situation. Uh, gross. This was like day three, day two or three. Yeah, real experimental with that mustard. <laughs> it's gross. I, I would, uh, yeah, I, I'd put this. I think I'll. I feel comfortable putting this at an eight. I think it's I think it's a very important thing to expand to to not be because some sometimes uh, people just will eat like the same like five meals their entire life, and I think it's like a gateway a gateway habit to like expanding your cultural awareness. You know, uh, like just try some weird food from another culture and like and then you you are kind of forced to learn a little bit about the culture or at least like if you try something that you would never try before you, you, I don't know, like eat, eating that, that weird lob stuff was, uh, you, you get a taste for another part of the world, I think. And it's, that's pretty cool. Also another part of the cow. Yeah. I think I'm at, I'm at a nine on this. I think this is something that we should all embrace and carry forward forever. Now presenting the taste blood traveler dan collins well thank you travis and thanks mike thanks everybody for listening um i think we sort of said everything there is to say just get out there try some weird stuff maybe you'll like it maybe you won't but hey you're not going to know until you give it a shot have a good have a good good night i love you goodbye you did great Next time on Perpetual Incompetence. He's like, like I don't know, like a rhythmic noodle who just like <laughs> flows above the dance floor. Yes. Also, next time on Perpetual Incompetence. I think every day we should keep track of what we dreamed immediately after waking up. And then we should, you know, do like research and stuff on what those dreams mean.